Well, if given immediately, we know CPR can double or even triple the chance of survival from cardiac arrest when it happens outside of a hospital setting. And you see Claire Kopsky joins us now. And Claire, we're talking about people who step up and give the CPR. Right. They're not yeah. superheroes. They are humans just like us, and they've been trained on CPR. But regardless of the result of the CPR that they administer, that person can struggle with mental health challenges as they recover emotionally from that experience. In a moment, you'll meet a man who's given CPR CPR more times than he can count and says doing something will not only help the person in cardiac arrest, but will also give you sanity when it's all over. It's a moment you can't plan for, but you better be prepared for. No one like plans to see their coworker turn blue and to fall to the floor and with sweat all over their face. I mean, it's a little bit shocking. That unexpected moment when someone needs CPR. The person is, that you're going to be working on is pulseless. In five minutes, brain tissue is going to die. Heart tissue is going to die. What are you going to do to them if you don't do perfect CPR? I mean, get down there, put your hand in the middle of their chest, start pumping. Attach defib pads to patient's bare chest. Mike Carlton learned the life skill more than 40 years ago. It was really quite a long time between that class and Turn it on. and actually using it. He first administered CPR when someone went down on a hiking trail. Years later, as an EMS worker and now director, he's given CPR countless times. If you do CPR on somebody and you know, there's, you become personally attached to them with the family there. He says each emergency is hard to forget. A lot of them stick with you, they sure do. There's no preparation for it. In his profession, he's learned to be tough, but that doesn't mean he's unaffected. Watching somebody pass away or watching somebody die is traumatic to, to, the, to most anybody. Dr. Joseph Sharp says the person that gives CPR needs to talk through what they experienced. In the aftermath, there's a lot going on, and I think the first and foremost is kind of shock, you know, and that really takes over in people's heads. It's disbelief, it's shock, it's fear. There's a lot of mixed emotions. Their emotions shared by thousands of people, whether the person they gave compressions lived or died. However, Mike says those feelings will be infinitely multiplied if you just stand by. Saying I didn't do anything to help might, for me, would be more damaging to my psyche than I tried, but it didn't work. If you want to do more damage, don't do anything to them. Because if they're pulseless and you don't shock them and they're in a shockable rhythm, there's an end game that we know all what that is. An end to someone's story that you could have changed by just getting trained. But when I say it's a life skill, it's a life skill. I mean, because if that's your child or if that's your, your spouse or your aunt or your uncle or whoever, um, that's the wrong time to go. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I didn't learn. Just such an important message during Heart Month. And in addition to understanding where to place your hands and what pace to pump your arms, CPR nowadays also means calling 911, getting the closest AED off the wall, and putting the pads on the person's chest so the machine can shock them if needed. Uh, you'll, you've heard that the AED was talking throughout the story. It's really a foolproof tool. It really talks you through what you need to do to help save someone's life. So you can sign up to learn CPR. There are so many trainings going on during this Heart Month. We've got resources on our website. Also, if you want to be a part of any of these cardi uh, cardiac arrest events throughout the month, we've got those details as well. Yeah, what well, an incredible story. Yeah, and I think knowledge is power. It seems yes. intimidating, but honestly, I mean, I remember, and this is years ago, there was a scene on The Office about staying alive. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a joke, and th th honestly, they used to help train people because right. it's 103 Jeez. beats per minute in that song. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Staying alive staying alive. And honestly, it's right. little things like that that can bring that power. Yes. But now I think AEDs, the knowledge and presence of those yes. and how that can help save a life. It's really incredible. Game changing tools. And if you were thinking about doing it and hadn't decided yet, exactly. Yeah. His story, it mm. definitely gets you uh, on board. Thanks, Claire. Absolutely.